Bernhardt playing Zorzim creates three Spiderling eggs and puts them into our deck. Are there any good combo decks in Hex? Um, none of the combo decks in the current standard format are very powerful, but the non-rotating Immortal format has a bunch of different combo decks that are reasonable. It's great. And by great, I mean awesome. Yep. N no, there's combo decks that exist in the standard format. They're just not particularly good. Which is, yeah, right? Like, weird. Weird. It's so, it's so enjoyable that, like, the combo decks in this deck are... The combo decks in Hex's standard format generally are, like... Um... Like, the last couple of seasons, at least, are, are like saffron olive quality combo decks like they exist and like sure you could play them but like you're probably not winning a tournament with them without getting very lucky so we get to jam the surging i, I guess this deck we're playing right now is kind of an infect style combo deck you could you could argue that this is infect ish Like, if my opponent doesn't answer the Surging Wildfire, it's going to kill them next turn. So Surging Wildfire, when it attacks, it gains a point of power permanently, and it deals damage equal to its power to my opponent. So, like, if they just, like, tap out and don't answer this next turn, we're going to be able to power it up with Blitz Blitz and then this to give it a ton of power and just, like, kill them in one swing. Transmography, yep. the Surging Wildfire out. They might have another Transmog. That Transmog might mean they have a second one. That being said, I'm not playing this deck to not go for it, so let's go. Yeah, they oh, they don't. Alright, well. Beep, beep. Take nine when I attack, then this is my nine power trampler. Shroud, sure. Block my two, three. Take nine down to two. And they're dead to this trigger next turn. Says crush. Dead to this trigger next turn. Oh, did they gain life from something? They're still dead because of the aspect of the squirrel here, but whatever. Pay more attention. This gives crush though, so get crushed in the most literal sense. They jumped our crush, dude. Right, right. It's fine. We had we had all the things. All the things were belong to us. Um, not quite sure what they're doing. Aspect of the squirrel is a little bit bad against deck that does more interaction. I'm gonna bring in. A bunch of crocs at the top end, I think. Sure. Crunch them up. Oh, you know what? Outlaw's pretty bad against their deck with uh, Warp Steel Shard Sworn. Easy trim. Yes. 
makes sense, I think, to me. Outlaw is also much worse than the Jirachu. I realize I sound like the Grinch who stole Christmas every time I say this, because I say this every season, but man, I hate spoiler seasons. I just like, can I just like get a full, a full list of cards and like work on everything together? I hate getting information in bits and pieces. We're in spoiler seasons for Hex and Magic right now. It's just like, please, please give me a set of cards so I can actually do something instead of like, Ooh, shiny, ooh, shiny. Can't they actually do anything with this yet. This hand's a little slow, but their hand's slow too, it looks like, so. And they don't have a third resource. As someone who enjoys the traffic spoiler, you're not biased at all. I mean, I guess I get paid to write about spoilers, so I should be happy about that, but I'd, I'd much rather just, like, get paid to write about a new set. Or, like, new decks. Like, I'd rather be rather be doing that. Alright, Surging Wildfire, who's your daddy? I don't know why I'm your daddy, because I did this to your mama! Alright, attack them with the Surging Wildfire, get in there. There's might have been merit to just, like, champ powering there, since they have, like, transmogs and removal in their deck, but... That's fine. That's fine. There's more where that came from, opponent. There's plenty more where that came from. Alright, since this is my last double damage thing, I'm gonna go ahead and burn my champion power now. Just attack them for the old 10 ball here. Push those damages. Are there more strangles in my future opponent? You know, sometimes you stumble and die. Ooh, we got a Wakuna lookout. Wakuna Matata, do do do. What a wonderful phrase. It's a worry-free philosophy. Wakuna Matata, do do do. What a wonderful phrase. Means no worries for the rest of your days. We are level 85. Do 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 Yeah, that's a, that's a glitch. It happens when uh, another pop up comes up at the same time. I think, if I recall correctly. Alright. Playing it's Marshall Josephina here, some kind of diamond based aggressive strategy most likely. Could be uh, Diamond Ruby Ardent, could be Diamond Wild Ardent, could be um, the Sockets deck that's been a little bit less popular recently. This hand needs some payoffs, but I think you just have to keep hands like this in this deck sometimes. Like, we have a turn 2 accelerant and we've got some, some plus powers. I guess we could even theoretically just, like, aspect this. 
This is standard. Howling Brave isn't legal in, in standard. Howling Brave is only legal in Immortal. This is actually this deck. Um, this deck was inspired by the the Immortal deck that I have been playing. This is basically like a standard port of the um, Wildfire Majesty deck that I've been playing in Immortal. It's like Diamond Ruby Ardent. Uh, Dream Move Rage was actually a good draw. It's a payoff card like we were talking about we wanted. Three. Oh, I was going to say, our O3 is going to do a good job blocking, but that's not actually true because this is about to get bigger. Yep. Surging Wildfire would be a sweet hit here. Or uh, Runier Hierophant, something we can play out. Ask and you shall receive. And actually, this is really sweet because um, we can blitz this and allow it to surprise block something. I guess they can champ power and lock this down. Uh, very real chance we kill them if they don't kick this off the board, though. Oh, oh, never mind. It's not going to be able to... Yep. See what they Valor here. Think, so I can't eat this because it's gained invincible from the Hero of Legend. I think I want to eat their Hero of Legend here. But I guess maybe it's right to just eat the Llama Herder. I'm going to get to block with this and then blitz it. So I get to eat one of these two things. The Llama Herder making more idiots this seems probably more valuable than the Valors. This game feels like it's going to be over before the Valors become relevant. And like if they're spending resources putting Valors on things they're not spending resources um, adding to the board, which is good for me. Yep. And that could potentially kill us next turn. Um, commander prompt. Man, that's a real shame that they had their champion power to lock this down. Because otherwise, would this be lethal? We'd hit this for three to be five, and then this would be nine, and then this would be, yeah, that would actually just be lethal. I think I'm just supposed to Dreamweaver Ancient them this turn. I can Dreamweaver Ancient plus champ power and get a random seven drop here, which will make my rune a four four. All right, that's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Go. See if they can push lethal here. They can transform this, which means it's going to be able to eat my Runeer Hierophant to deal me four to five points of damage. I believe they have one more Valor in their hand. Oh, they have Landsguard's Vengeance, so we're super dead. And by super dead, I mean exactly, exactly dead. No, because this is going to... Yep. Oh, last gas, oh, last gas. I think Righteous Outlaw is good on the play here. Dreamweaver Ancient kind of gets mucked up in these board states in this matchup. Like, if that had been a croc, we'd have probably just won that game. I think Pyre Strike's probably reasonable as well. I want to keep the blitzes, but maybe the aspect of the squirrels could trim for some, some Pyre Strikes in here. I don't hate that. Be a little bit more interactive. On the draw, I think we're going to cut the Righteous Outlaws, but on the play, I think I definitely want them. Probably on the draw, we'll cut the Outlaws and, like, bring in the three Karns and a third Pyre Strike.
We get to be able to play this game, which is a pretty, pretty big upside. It seems super reasonable. If they don't have a one drop, this Righteous Outlaw is going to be insane. Hopefully we had another wild to play Croc on four. Or five, you know, one of the two. Big bucks, no one drop. Big bucks, no one drop. Sweet. Alright, I guess we also need to dodge Totem Trap, technically. They decree a banishing this, that's whatever, because then that's a decree of banishing that's not hitting one of my other troops that's got, got a lot of threatening power. Activated my trap card! Ha ha! And like this, just gets to eat the Lama Herder now, which is fantastic for us. Turn into the Scarlet Outlaw, good sir. That's pretty good. Um, I think we're just gonna play the Runeer out this turn. Two to my opponent, two to their thing. And then like, like next turn, if they play a four defense troop, we get to just go ahead and play commander prompt and attack into it. So, and actually I can chant power this up to a five and then this is gonna turn it into uh, an eight. So, opponent might just be dead here if they don't have removal for the Runeer Hierophant. Just like the good old turn four, put it in ya. Please just play an idiot. Rats. Surging wildfire. Uh oh. Deck them for six here. There might be merit just pulling the trigger on this now before this dies, but if they like play an idiot out, I kind of want to be able to trample over it. They probably need to champ power this down this turn. I feel like that's probably going to be the most used emote during our daytime streams the Jake Loud. He is certainly loud. Huh, am I just playing that? So if they go shard. Oh, this can attack now? Yeah, that's great. If they go shard second heart of embers, we're probably still fine because of the champ power and the aspect of the squirrel. They kind of, okay, there's that. So they have to choose between the commander prompt and the surging wildfire here. I get uh, two, two bolts of three. They probably need to kill the surging wildfire, right? And if we, yeah, if we hit a resource, we just get to crock them. And if we don't hit a resource, I haven't actually counted yet, but I think they're still dead. Oh no! Stomp, stomp, roar! Roar! Oh, jeez, this thing even lives because it's a 5 8? That curve, though. Yeah, get in there. Roar. Got him. Alright, and again, the Righteous Outlaw is great there on the play, but I think it's going to be pretty mediocre on the draw, so I'm going to cut that. I'm going to bring in the three Karns and another Pyre Strike here, I think. Maybe I want the last strike on the draw, too. It's very possible. Maybe it's better than one of these other things. Yeah, the Fate Weave resources sound great. Like Skylands Plus, basically. I'm just gonna run three strikes. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's better than a Blitz. Let's do that. Be a little bit, be like, basically a Ruby Wild interactive deck on the draw here with like some combo-esque elements. Like hanging out with your dad? Got your sweet plane? Get some Jake Cam? He's cuter than me, anyways. Yeah.
the sweet thing about the fate weave resources is like they make one shard hands keepable a lot of the time right because you're just like all right well i'll just like fate weave into please mulligan please mulligan please mulligan please mulligan i think this hand's a little bit too slow we've got eight two drops or we got 11 two drops to mulligan into yeah i'm just gonna keep it i don't think that's enough two drops to mulligan into We've got a croc, and we've got most of the resources to play it. I drew a pyre strike to be interactive. That's good. That's good. Lead on wild, so that way we can... Let's see if they have their righteous outlaw. Just a lot of her. God. It's a shame. It's a shame we did not hit our what's it called there? Um Carnosaur to trade with this. It's pretty good, so they can exhaust each other here. So they didn't have a powerful three drop to play. I think I want to just play the Greener Hierophant out next turn. It's like curve our powerful threats into each other. You were testing limited with Fate Weave? How does that work? <laughs> Should probably just Pyre Strike this now, right? Huh, they're missing resources. So I have a decision. I could try and just kill them. The surging wildfire plus the aspect of the squirrel means that they could die. Nah, it's probably just better to be conservative here. Let's just kill this, and then next turn I can proc them. God, we're gonna die here, aren't we? Yeah, we're actually just dead. Very unfortunate. Get last guard out of one game, and we're gonna get just run out of this one. I probably this hand was probably a little bit too slow to keep. Hand was probably a little bit too slow to keep. I can croc and kill two of their things here, but then they're just gonna be able to lock down the croc. They don't even have to lock down the croc, right? Yeah, I probably should have mulliganed to a hand that had something to do on the second turn. I was also possible I should have just played the Pyre Strike on three as opposed to playing the Rainer Hierophant and trying to curve out threat threat. No, I think the keep was a mistake. The keep the keep was the thing that was wrong. You just shouldn't have kept the hand. Yeah, kind of. You're probably right that I should have, like, once I once I did make the bad keep, I should have Pyre struck on three, but, like, that would have cut them off of, what, three, like, six points of damage over the turn, so that means I end up being fine with, uh, yeah. The rabbit was, was higher risk, higher reward, like, if they didn't have a... If they didn't have a what's it called, a removal, the rabbit was going to kill them. Sure. Scarlet Outlaw, so we can kill this. This is a good, good game to win the coin flip for. Uh, play this. Um, I really don't want to aspect this, do I? I guess they don't have a lot of good removal in their main deck, right? 
You just aspect this, then 12 my opponent this turn. That seems great, actually. So, shoot you, shoot your thing. And take six from my trigger, take six from my attack. Got the six more crush left behind. And then next turn I could go Acolyte of Shoku Blitz onto here. If I hit a resource, I can champ power it as well. Unless they have like a main deck gruesome deed, they're probably pretty cold to this. I guess Acolyte develops my resources better and deals the same amount of damage. That's fair. I like that... I like that this line allows my troop to be bigger because like otherwise they could kill this with Cremate next turn. And like this is four more damage the following turn as well. They're... Are they just dead? If I'd have hit my champion power, they would have been just dead, right? Hopefully they fix that bug. This still makes you target even though it's not doing anything. They plan to block here, right? So my opponent's going to go to two this turn. Because they're going to take six and lose two and take two. So go... Can't beat the board. Uh, Righteous Outlaw again is very bad on the draw. Um, Aspect of the Scroll is actually pretty reasonable in this matchup. Dreamweaver Ancient's a lot a bit slow. Uh, Carnosaurs, Crocosaurs, and Pyre Strikes are fine. Basically, we just turn it from like a super proactive deck in game one into a little bit more interactive post board in a lot of these matchups. And play versus the draw definitely matters. Like, I'll probably bring the Righteous Outlaws back in on the play if we have a game three. That's decent. Turn 2 Acolyte, turn 3 Pyre Strike, turn 4 Croc, probably. We need to draw a wild resource, but we have a lot of those. Like that one there. Black is pretty good. I'm gonna lean on the Life Leer assist here as opposed to the Acolyte of Shoku. This one has a point of power, so it can start attacking. Opponent goes like Shard, Crusader, Chant Power, they hit us for 9 here, but then I get to Pyre Strike the Crusader, which feels good. No Crusader, also good for us. No extra shard, also good for us. I guess the downside to having played this one out here is that it doesn't block Rust Bucket Distractor, like Acolyte of Shoku would. Pyre strike this guy off the face of the earth, and then when this croc comes down next turn, it's probably gonna end the game. A croc will eat both of these and then leave behind a 5 6. That's huge. This deck is definitely doing objectively powerful things. This card's very good, it just hasn't had a good home. Even this deck's, like, kind of a little bit light on thresholds to play it, but we've been hitting them consistently, which feels good. Another Wakuna lookout! Wakuna Matata! Everyone's having a good Thursday afternoon. Welcome 
Uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, my name is Jeff Hoagland. I am a TCG player and content producer. You've landed here at my Twitch page, maybe my YouTube page in the future. If you're enjoying what you see, I'd encourage you to show the support. Use that follow button there on your screen. It doesn't cost you anything. It helps other people find my stuff. If you're really enjoying what you see and you want to help me produce more content like this, there's a couple different ways you can do that. The first is by subscribing on Twitch or becoming a patron on Patreon. Both of those help support myself financially directly, so I can spend more time producing content and less time doing other things to make some money. You'd also support my content by supporting my sponsor, HexPrimal.com. We'd love to buy and sell Hex TCG cards with you. And if you use code Jeff5 at checkout there, you'll save 5% on your singles orders. Yeah, yeah, definitely, Injured. And, like, the only reason why this deck could do it is, like, we have 17. I wonder what the actual Hyper Geo is on 17. Hyper Geometric. So what are the odds? So Croc on 5, we've seen 11 cards on average. So the population size is 60, 17 successes, we need 3, and then 11 card sample. We are... Oh, sample's up. We're 66% to be able to cast a croc on 5. Which isn't actually very high, so... McBoombis, sure. We're going to have a race to the finish. Sounds fine. It's got Life Lyrist or Righteous Outlaw on two. Outlaw's pretty bad turn two on the draw against Bombus. In fact, he's, he's bad against Bombus in general because they have uh, Warp Seal Shard Sworn and uh, Thunderfields here. They have just a lot of X1s that get in the way of him. This is going to be one of the first cards we go to cut when we get to the reserves. Sounds like Moneyball. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, there's going to be a percentage of that, like, part of that 34% time we're, like, not going to have a croc in our hand anyway. So, like, we're probably, like, just north of 70% to, like, be able to cast a croc in the games that we have it. They don't have one ones to put into play here. This Righteous Outlaw is going to get all up in their business. Sweet. Just want to get him down and get attacking. Uh, this does mean we can't Surging Wildfire next turn, but I think I'd rather rather get this going. Righteous Outlaw, that's fine. And do a Bambly Bot. We draw Runeer next turn, we'll play that. Otherwise, we'll just jam the Slife Lyrist into play. Commander Primp's not bad. You know, honestly... There's a non-zero chance these Dreamweaver Ancients should just be Crocs. <laughs> I built this deck because I wanted to play Dreamweaver Ancient in it and like curve prompt into Dreamweaver Ancient, but there's good chance this should just be like Crocs in our main deck. That's, that is something. Hopefully we hit a wild source here so we can jam this down their throat. Did not. Um, okay, so I'm going to play this. I'm going to play Surging Wildfire here. Maybe I think so. Gale forces in our reserves are looking real good right now. I don't know if it's that much worse. It's worse in the McBombus decks, but I don't know by how much. That's pretty good. Just gonna let them shoot down this. Speaking of Heart of Embers. I'm taking 5 here, down to 15. If I hit a wild, I can kill them, I think. 
Yeah, they'll die if I hit a wild, I believe, because it'll be three, seven, ten. They could jump and go to one. Oh, now I have to put my my theory to the test here. I believe they jump and go to one. This is eight, eleven. No, this should be dead, right? And actually, no, I think they're actually going to one. Yeah, because this is twenty and they're at twenty-one basically. Rawr! Yep, so they have to jump block here, and this says crush, so they're gonna go to one. This is my surging wildfire. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Alright, now they have to kill this, because otherwise they're gonna die to the trigger next turn. If they have a, uh, Lasgar's Vengeance, they're in a fine spot. Weird, weird. Has, if they have Lasgar's Vengeance, they're gonna be good. Who saw that one coming? Transmogrifate also works here. Oh wait, this is permanently plus defense, so Lasgars doesn't work? God, that's great. It's permanently crushed too. Yeah, I forgot, I forgot. God, Aspect is so good. This card's great. I love being squirrely, sure. We well, you know one of their two cards is the constant they pick back up. Alright, so they're actually just dead here, right? Because even if they have a transmog for this, the Dreamweaver Ancient has crushed, so they have to block it. Yeah, so they're dead even if they had a transmog there. Um, so Righteous Outlaw is pretty bad in this matchup, like I said. Gale Force is insane. Chomp's probably fine. They have the constant on top of them. Deathly Fiend! With the resub. I'm sorry it lapsed. I appreciate you coming back, though. Dreamweaver Ancient's probably worse than Croc, again. Um, Aspect and Blitz are probably the other cards I want to trim here. I just feel like my go-to's a lot of the time. I like that Aspect gets them out of Lasgar's range, so maybe we'll leave some more of those in. Save. I think this deck might actually be really good. I just built this deck because I was screwing around and like wanted to play like Surging Wildfires and Aspect of the Squirrels, Dreammover Ancients, but it's doing like objectively powerful things and has like quality interaction for when your opponent is trying to get under you. I have a bunch of AA aspects. I actually just like the art in the regular one better. Pretty easy redraw here. One resource and it's not even wild. Gale Force, which are a little bit aggressive, depending on what they have. Definitely not worth going to five. Hopefully our opponent has their Silver Talon Mandate on four, so that way we get to Gale Force, clear their board, untap Surging Wildfire, attack them. What's going on, Neo? Welcome. Stomp for our well, my hand wants to draw a bunch of resources. What you got, what you got, what you got? Flickering gobbler. Alright, well. We're we just taking three from this. Do they not have an action to play? Are they not using their Bumblebot? The post-combat Bumblebot of shame. Gale Force also cleans these guys up nicely. This card's actually in our board for beating on Empress, but works fine here. Alright, sweet. That's the resource that we're looking for. Go ahead and play Surging Wildfire next turn, hopefully into some Crocs to follow it up. 
Let's get our stomp stomp roar on. If they have the, what's it called here? It's gonna be a little annoying, but it's not the end of the world. They don't have the silver talent mandate, sweet. this down their throat. I'm not going to use my champ power because they could have Pyre Strike or I'm not going to do it because it's not going to resolve. All right. Wait to interrupt me, opponent. Rude. Oh, please draw a resource. Please draw a resource. Please draw a resource. Oh, geez. All right, so... I guess we'll Karn and fight the Thunderfield. If we didn't run a resource, we'd have gotten a Croc, both of these. That would have been so delicious. That would have been so yummy. So yummy in my tummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. I've got love in my tummy and I don't know what to do. Don't play a second heart of embers and kill both my dudes. Hopefully they play out a second dork here so my croc can, can be hungry all over the board. Rude. I am not muted. I thought that was just a blocker. I might have another deny too. Especially since I have the second one here. I, since I played the first one out, I think they're actually less likely to play around a second. So if they have an action, they can make a Bumblebot, and then the second croc eats the heart plus the bot. Check the sound systems on whatever second-rate operating system you're using over there, Klutzy Poo. Last Guard's Vengeance, sure. Means I can't block this profitably. I think I still have to trade here, right? Makes the second croc kind of awkward. Nah, I'm just gonna take it. I'm just gonna... Yeah, I'm just gonna take this hit, because the next turn, I can croc them and do this, and if they don't have, like, running Lasgard Vengeance here, we're gonna be in a really good spot. How many troops do I have in here? I got three troops in here. Yeah, so there's gonna be like dead in two, right? So I get to hit them with this, and then next turn I get to double aspect plus champ power. So if they don't burn us out this turn, we're gonna be. Yep, deal. Have a transmog here, right? Halt. I guess we have a lot of combat tricks in our deck. That's, yep, that's a pretty good one. It means I don't get to make a new one from my scrounge. That's pretty bold. Open draw warp steel shards for in here. I <laughs> <sighs> have to block both of these. 
played this game really well. We're up a game, right? This is game two. So if we had a resource, the champ power is lethal next turn. After the Invitational, Klutzy Poo. Running people down. Running them down and out. It's the old, the good old clean four, like literally four ofs dot deck. It's gotta be good and consistent. Yeah, I mentioned this earlier in the stream, so if you weren't here, you didn't catch it. Um, the MMRs on everyone in even this high in the ladder right now are really close together, so single wins and single losses are causing a lot of movement. And honestly, the most important thing isn't being first, like, first and 64th get exactly the same thing. The goal is to just win enough games to put enough distance between myself and the people that are, like, say, 50th and lower. Like, that, that 50 to 80 range is where I don't want to be pushed into there fighting with them. I just want to try and win enough batches to stay up above them. Ideally, I'm going to be playing in the Invitational on the 30th when the last day of the ladder season is going to be traveling on the Thursday before, so hopefully we're going to be able to pad the ladder rank up before then. I played against this player earlier. They were playing a Sapphire Blood Underworld Crusader deck. Uh, the old double ruby hand into double... talk. We talk about the model of consistency that we are and then immediately look at those hands. Ugh. Yeah, usually there's a lot of uh, distance at the very top. Um, usually it goes down a little bit further than just top 10. Usually it's um, it's like say top 32 or so. You have to win, start have to start winning multiple matches in a row before you can move this late into the season. But this season there's there's still a lot of movement up there. Um, I could get my excel. Huh. Do I want to just get my acceleration going here? Nah, I'm just going to play the Righteous Outlaw and attack with this. This way, if my opponent plays like a Crusader next turn, I can go... This is worse against Cheap Shot. Yep, I should have completed my thought. I was just thinking about that, too. Line's much worse against Cheap Shot. I was thinking if they had a Crusader or like a 1-4, we could go this guy in to flip this and then Blitz push it through. Cheap Shot makes our life pretty miserable. Mulligan to five, putting us at a pretty strict disadvantage here. Like, with how transparent Hex has been about everything that they do with their game, I'd be pretty... I'd be pretty surprised if they made a change to the ladder system and didn't tell us that they were making a change to the ladder system. The ladder... The ladder system should feel different from season to season as there's more people playing Hex. Like, more or less people, you know? It depends on how many people are competing for those spots and how much they're playing. Honestly, the difference this season could very likely just be that, like, people are a little bit burnt on these current formats, so, like, they're playing a little bit less. Or people are saving up there, especially on the limited side, people are probably saving their Platinum to play in, um... To play in... Formats with the new cards as opposed to the existing cards. Well, once 
spiders come into play, we're gonna lose a bunch of life. Like that. Yep. Um, that's five power unblockable guy too. I think we're just holding for a turn here. It's a shame I wasn't able to get one more dreadling out of this so I could scrounge this. Well, we get transmogged, we get transmogged. Jet? That's an interesting question. Maybe that's better than the detention sphere that I have in the, sh the sideboard right now? I have a detention sphere in the board of the deck currently, and I could definitely see a world where that's worse than, um, that's worse than Anguish Unmaking. Also worth noting that, uh, we have two basic swamps and only one basic island, so, like, it's easier to get swamp planes than it is to get island planes in the deck. This more flood here means this game is very done. Kind of just our lack of solid offense at the beginning was not good. Again, Righteous Outlaw can get out of here because he's miserable. Aspect's probably a little bit medium. Uh, I think I just want my Crocs and my Fire Strikes. Again, just another matchup where Crocs seems like it's utterly insane. Yeah, like, the detention sphere might be fine. Like, the detention sphere is a flexible answer, too. It's just, like, susceptible to enchantment removal. I mean, the mana base isn't really that painful. I think this hand's an easy mulligan. Just, like, no acceleration. No, nothing to do before turn four. This hand's much better. Uh, yeah, Twitter DM or uh, Twitch message. Both of those are open. That's actually the archetype I'm looking to play more of. The, uh, the Bant Tamiyo deck seems sweet. We could just play Nahiri and then only board her in against Blood Moon decks because the Blood Moon will give us the red mana to cast her. JK, LOL. No, the resource feels real bad, real bad, real bad. Missing on a resource feels real bad. Oh, the do da day. <laughs> get a shard so I can play this, please. So, make, putting the Dreadling into play means that this is no longer a free block for the Tribunal Magistrate. I want to just use this next turn, make some Dreadlings. The Magistrate's real good. Sure, man. I probably want to kill this, actually. Something with assault in their hand. That was a pretty fantastic draw. I think I'm just gonna kill this so they can't make dreadlings and then try and kill us next turn. 
And then next turn I can aspect this through. Since I didn't block it this turn, I don't need to give it crush to get damage through, so let's just do this. Because next turn they would have been able to make Dreadlings, and the Dreadlings would have been 1, 2, 3, they would have been 7 power. They could have Siege Engine, yep. It's a very reasonable, reasonable one they could have for being a Dreadling deck. And then if they don't have a Transmog, the Aspect of the Squirrel might be able to push this Renier through this game. God's willing. They don't have it here, they're actually just dead. Damn it! Ah, oh, that's frustrating. Sure. Hey, eh, you win some, you lose some. Yep. A lot of eggs in our deck at this point. If we would have hit Surging Wildfire this turn, we probably could have run this out. That's, uh, if we get really fortunate with these eggs, like, good chance they're gonna hit like two to three eggs at one of these turns, then that's just gonna kill us in like one swing. Right, it hasn't happened yet. All right, they're dead to a blitzer and aspect now. Yeah, I guess not just dead. They're eight. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna miss for two more turns. Alright, we gotta dodge spiders one more time here, and then the Arachno Glider is gonna close the game out. I guess, even if we hit- we have to hit one? No. Huh, is this- are we gonna do this? They have to hit a bunch of eggs this turn to not die. I think they're still dead, right? Because of Surging Wildfire? Wow. Alright, you know, good beats. Did you? We're gonna be very dead to that very quickly, but uh, we're gonna get a third game. Good stuff, good stuff! I don't think I wanna change anything. Don't think I wanna change anything. I need to check a diaper really quick. Jake might need to change. I'll be right back.
Huh. Is this worth keeping? This is probably a little slow, right? I don't have any interaction. I don't have that many twos is the problem. I'm gonna keep this. A lot of their hands are slower. Let's just, just go over in here into commander prompt and have two payoffs. Their deck's not particularly fast. We have two threats. Commander prompt's a fine threat. He attacks into all their stuff. Especially in the back of an aspect. Strikes a good draw. Didn't take the Pyre Strikes. So they probably have Tribunal Magistrators or 3-drop then. Or they have one that they just don't really care if it dies. There's nothing up here. We need, like, denied here. Hero fall, maybe just a transmog. Deal. Yeah, this is why you should always transmog post combat. They try okay, transmog get cheap shot, sure. They tried to walk me into something with speed, but I could have gotten like a 2 2 speed there, so they 10 out of 10 should have done that post combat. That's really unfortunate. I also get to know that I've done nothing but draw air. <sighs> Life Lyris is the worst of our two accelerants here, because the other one would at least be able to generate dreadlings, which are actually kind of potent with the commander prompt. You know, one of their two cards right now is a one shot, or a conscript, one cost conscript from that. I mean, like, one of these shards could be a coin right now, and, like, there's a reason I'm not playing coins in this deck. Like, I don't really think we can afford the slow resources. That's going to be kind of an interesting question, like, what are the more the more optimal? Should we be playing coins or should we be playing bait weave resources? Yeah. Definitely going to be an interesting discussion point. Yeah. 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 If their last card is the trend mug, we're in a very good spot. play around it and ship. I'm not going to offer this commander prompt for the spiderling trade. Uh, yep, I'm okay trading. Oh, this can't trade here. I'm silly. I thought this was going to be a 4-1, but this could trade here and I'm okay with that trade too. Yeah, the Lyricist is a fine swing, because this trade is fine. I've got plenty of resources. And, like, even if they have a transmog here to not die to this... Nice! The old crush for 15. Sweet. Next turn, we're going to be able to play this out and make a bunch more dreadlings with this. Which, this one I've crushed next turn, but I'll have a bunch of 3-power Dorcos. And then that resource is actually decent because we do get to activate this an extra time. And every one of these red links is lethal in the back of Commander Prompt. Got him. Get him. Got him. Good.
Dum da dum 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 dum. I'm gonna change this up a touch. I'm gonna put a couple of crocs in the main, I think. I'm gonna cut two of these remover ancients, even a little medium minus. Gives me some more spots on the board. Maybe another gale force. I don't actually know. Like, what cards do we need to the board? Is there anything? I really feel like we're not missing anything specific, so like another Gale Force seems fine for the random Bombus decks. What are what are wild cards that are good? I don't want to play like Repost because um, I really don't want a double Ruby card in my board. You can play like a Gargolith for the random removal decks, that doesn't seem terrible. Let's just do that. It's okay, none of them are very, very good anyways. Carns and Gale Forces and stuff like that, but thank you for the reminder. I should minimize that. Uh, Fourth card seems smart. Let's just do that. I don't feel like we really need a Gargolith type card. Yeah, one Gargolith type card's probably fine. Let's do that. Against the aggressive decks, we definitely want like 12 or more two drops. So like having eight accelerants and then four cards seems great. The bot must be dead. Victim. That's probably worse than like Soul of Battle, right, Tom? If we wanted a fun blowout card, Soul of Battle's still standard legal, right? Sounds pretty good. Accelerant into Runeer into Prompt. But it's playing Dreaming Fox, so probably more controlling deck. Gonna wish we had that Gargolith. Actually, this is a, if they're a control deck, we're gonna wish we had the, the extra Dreamweaver Ancients as opposed to the Crocosaurus, most likely.
What you got going on, opponent? What you got? What you got? What you got? Another resource is not what we're looking to draw here. Need, need some action. Most likely Sapphire Diamond Control. Also Sapphire Ruby variations that have been going around. Sapphire Diamond. Monsters against one of my other monsters. I guess this one probably qualifies as Burgle's monster, huh? chance my opponent's control deck has no removal. We might be able to murder them with this Runer Hierophant next turn. But I feel like the chances of that happening are very low. deny do you have a deny to listen to me whine it's actually a pretty good hit for us yep eat these two uh yeah i'm gonna jet power this the old re re up the transmog here deal Sub hype, did we get a sub in there? Did I miss one? Doesn't look like it. Dark heart, sure. That's pretty good for them. Uh, I'm gonna lose our arena regular here. post-combat commander prompt. We am just supposed to do that pre-combat. Yeah, probably. They have a second heart here. We're going to be pretty slaughtered. Hopefully they just have a bunch of draw spells. That would be ideal. Maybe a bird. I guess bird gains them life and draws them cards at this point, which is kind of bad for us. Alright, so I'm doing this. And I'm attacking with both of these. Time to gather icon! With the 12 month resubscription. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Welcome back. I appreciate the continued support. Don't transmog me, bro. Alright, didn't get transmogged. It's a good day to be alive, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing was transmogrified here. Oh, ring a ding ding da ding da ding bing bing ring a ding ding. Oh, oh, this dingler has has attack has attack in addition to defense. Who doesn't love a dingler with a little bite in him? Sure, gain some life opponent. You got it. 
my commander prompt has crush. Wait, where did, where did the conceal come from? Now I wanted to crush over the top. He'd already played two transmog, so I think that's fine. Uh, this is nine, 10, 11 blitz is lethal. Oh, the dark hearted action generation on it. Got it. The dark hearted action generation on it. Thank you. I was missing that. You're right. It did have a blue gem in it, didn't it? Oh, blitz. Ready to get God opponent. How do you feel about getting God? How do you feel about your lethal blow being dealt by a lowly ling a ding dingler? All right. Uh, do you want some Cheerios? Do you want some of these? Yeah. Oh, I do have a Gargolith in my board. God bless. There is a Gargolith in my board still. All right, so the blitzes and the aspects are less than ideal. The chomp is great. The garg is great. The extra crocs are fine. Leave this third aspect in. Yeah, that seems fine. What gem do I want on this bad boy? Probably just crush. Yeah. I'm thinking these other ones are particularly good. Yep. Let's run it. Check, check, check it, see. Wreck, wreck, wreck it, see. We might want a third chomp in the board for this matchup, actually. We were talking about cards I wanted in the board. And like third chomp's not completely unreasonable. Dark heart's kind of miserable for us. Gosh, what a great Hearthstone hand. I guess it has one resource, so it's not technically a Hearthstone hand. It's close, though. Pretty, pretty easy redraw here. What do you think, huh? What do you think, oldest son? What are you thinking? Do you want pretzels? You want the pretzels? Do you want these? Do you want these? No? Okay. Just eat your Cheerios. Eat your Cheerios and be happy. I'm going to keep this one on the draw. Um, every card really counts against these control decks, and um, we just need, like, one more resource for the sand to be reasonable. <gasps> oh. Oh. I wonder if Karn's actually reasonable in this matchup because it eats the Thunderfield Seers and it can, like, eat Darkheart after, um... That's what I'm looking for. It can eat Darkheart after Darkheart's, like, blocked one of our four power guys. Alright, moment of truth. Please be a ruby so we can punish this attack. Oh, rats. No just Dude, you've got an entire bowl full of Cheerios right there. Finish those Cheerios and then you can have more. I know. Yeah, trading with Bird is less relevant, but it's definitely true. Alright, let's get to the next one here. Remember, laddering's about winning games in an efficient amount of time, not about eking out every last percentage point. Yeah, I think I'm just going to run it. I think Aspect of the Squirrel lets us punch through in a similar way and offers bigger blowouts.
Sure. And it's got resources and non-resources in it in both of our shard threshold types. Daddy needs a resource, Jacob! Daddy needs a resource, Jacob! Can you give your father a resource? I need you to channel your toddler energy into the deck and push your resource to the top. Channel your toddler energy. Channel the toddler energy. Channel! Jacob, you didn't channel your toddler energy hard enough. I'm very disappointed in you. It is an oh no indeed. Oh, please don't totem trap me. Please don't totem trap me. Please don't totem trap me. Oh no! Oh no, they totem trapped our resource! Oh no! Well, the good news is they don't have any sapphire. Huh. I am not going to attack this Rainier Hierophant into a totem trap here, so I'm just gonna pass the turn. I think it's worth, it's worth just passing here to not attack into another totem trap. Shard Prism. All right. That's one way to get Sapphire. Opponent's build has some interesting choices in it. Yep, sure. And deny up now, which is annoying. I'm gonna hold the commander prompts since I have these acolytes. I'd rather this get denied than that. Something getting transmogrified here. Pride's fall. Okay. Makes sense. It's got power and toughness at least. It's a new pressure. Feel a little bad. We might have missed six point of damage that turn I decided to play around a second totem trap. Maybe because they trapped us the first time, I'm not supposed to play around the second one. I'm unsure what you're asking. Are you asking why I haven't told people when Set 7's releasing? Because I don't know. As soon as I ever release it, everyone else will. He was so young! <laughs> he was so young! Don't play a bird. Don't do it. Don't play a bird. God dang it. The bird means they got to draw cards and gain life, which is miserable for us. Stop, stop, roar. We get to eat both of these, but like, whenever they, whenever this gets to draw cards against the aggressive deck because like, we stumbled, it's just like so, so nauseating. So nauseating. Ah! Ah! Yeah, this game still blowing pretty quickly. Even if our opponent was at like minus six life from that turn we played around the totem trap, we'd still be in a pretty bad spot this game. They're like a uh, dark heart away from burying us. Even uh. Even an old Earthen's glory is pretty bad for us here too. All right. Well, so I don't actually think it's unreasonable for my opponent to have um, Clash of Steel or Dreadend in their deck post board against us. So I'm actually just going to spend my resources using this Acolyte of Shoku. 
rather than committing more th possible threats to the board. Like, I'm basically just going to be like, put, put them in a position to say like, hey, answer this stuff I have, or it's going to kill you, and then we'll play more stuff out. Well, that is probably going to demand a removal spell with the Acolyte of Shoku in play here. Transmogging five drops is risky business. This gives attacking, when this attacks, other shroom can get plus two power, which is pretty good. Pretty good. That's really good. Means that this is probably gonna work. This card's so good against control decks. That's the downside to not having played out cards there. Deal. Okay. Let's try this. This is probably going to run into a deny. Beating an old earthen's glory. Yep. Sure. That draws a couple cards. Oh, we really need to kill them this turn. Which is unfortunate because I don't think we can. Dark card's pretty bad for us here, too. Sometimes they have one. I haven't been playing Dreadend in my main deck. I think it's pretty poorly positioned on average against the field. Probably like bin this, hope to draw a aspect of the scroll. Surging wildfire. Did that do anything for us? Okay, just attack with everything here. They've got seven cards in their hand, like we're pretty dead. Keep 
this alive and then play this Acolyte of Shoku. Good. In a world where they have a whole lot of nothing, and we draw, like, an uh, aspect, we can be okay. Are they dead? They just cast a tail of destiny. It feels like they might be dead. That's a pretty good draw. Huh. Am I supposed to do this again or am I supposed to jam the Dreamweaver Ancient? That's the question. I think I'm supposed to jam the Dreamweaver Ancient, right? It's lethal all on its own. This makes Deny a live card is the reason not to play it. I think there's a chance I'm just supposed to, like, activate the Dreadleg again. Gargolith already got used. If I could keep up Gargolith, I 10 out of 10 would have just activated this. Man, are we going to squeak this game out here? They just, like, draw a bunch of cards and, like, brick a whole bunch? Sometimes that happens when you play the control deck. So they get one block, and then they have to answer two other things to not die here. Ship. And transmogs probably don't do it. They need to be like totem traps or repels or something. Pride's Fall doesn't hit anything that I've played out. They've already played two Pride's Falls, so I'd be kind of surprised if they have more of those. Okay. Holy crap, they died. Well then. Hey, wait, nope. Yep, destroyed. Up. Oh, I did it. I did it. I think I did it. Did I do it? Was I? Yeah, we were eight out of eight. Sweet. <laughs> 